Again, find the parent genotypes, the sex cells, fertilize, and then we're done. So remember these rules. Start with parents, sex cells, fertilize egg and sperm, and then there's a couple other things we can do. We can get the genotypic and phenotypic ratios and other calculations. So those are the main things. Watch this. We're going to do a practice problem together. And we're going to get a lot of word problems, but you're going to be masters, okay, as long as you remember those rules. So here we go. A homozygous tall male. Remember what homozygous means, right? Uh, same and tall. In this case, it seems to be the dominant form, right? So we have a homozygous tall male is crossed with a short female. What are the possible offspring genotypes? Assume big T is tall and little t is short. So anytime you see a word problem, just right away that you do this, okay? You write parents, you write the sex cells, and you write fertilized gametes. So remember that. That will save your life. Trust me. And then we could do these other things, genotypic, phenotypic ratio. So here we go. What are we going to do? Well, we have to figure out. We know the parents are uh, big T, big T. Why? Well, because it says homozygous tall. Homo means same. And tall, well, that's the dominant form. How do I know it's a dominant form? Well, look, big T, little t, it's capital. That's the dominant one. The dominant one says tall. Okay, cool. So it's homozygous tall. These are the same, and it must be tall. So big T, big T. And I'm crossing. What does cross mean? It's a trick word for, uh, or a key word for mate, that they're going to reproduce together. So here's the male, and it's going to be crossing with the female over here. Um, and she's short. Well, the only possible genotype, remember genotype means the allele combination. So think letters. So the only possible letter or allele combination must be little t, little t. Remember, if there's a big T in here, automatically, because of its dominance, it would be tall. It wouldn't be short anymore. So, But it's telling us that she's short. So little t, little t, okay? Cool. Now, next thing is sex cells. Well, we have to go through meiosis. Remember, they line up in metaphase as homologous pairs, then they segregate. So remember, big T and big T must separate. So what do we get for the guy? Well, we make sperm, and it's big T, big T, and the other one is big T, big T. They segregate. Easy, right? Okay, so what are the females? Well, same thing. Segregate, we get one egg with big T and another one big T. Now, just don't get confused because you remember they make four sex cells, don't they? Well, yeah, you're right. But we're looking at combinations, so even though there are four sperm made and actually one egg, or right, one egg that's made, still, the, com the, the main thing is that you get one combination um, of these. So in this case, we're going to get big T, big T, little t, little t. Watch, you'll see the next part. Now we got to fertilize the gametes. We use this table called the Punnett square. The Punnett square is fancy for fertilization box. And so all we're going to do now is just put the sperm over here and the eggs right there. And then this allows us to fertilize in, in these little make-believe fertilizing chambers. So watch, here we go. We're going to put the male there, big T, big T, big T, big T. So I just put these over there. And same thing with the, with the eggs. I put these over here. And does it, do the sperm have to go here on the top and the eggs on the side? No, but I mean, we use that just as convention, but the sperm could have been over here and that could have been over here. But just follow this format so you don't get confused. Okay, so now how does this work? Don't get confused, um, but this is just like filling out like a multiplication table. Um, you just go down and across. So I get this big T and I'm going to bring it down and then this T, I'm going to bring it across. Okay, so I'm working with the first one. Down and across. First row, first column. Here we go. Big T, I just brought it down. Little t, I brought it across. Remember, big t goes in front, okay? Next one, same thing. I'm going to this next one right here. So I must go down and across. So I'm bringing this sperm down, this egg across, and that's what I get. Same thing. Now I go to this chamber because I have to fill that out. And I go to this one. I bring that t down, and I bring this little t across. And look what happens. Big t and then little t. Same thing. I go now this one, and I'm going straight down this column, straight across that row, Big T and little t. Sounds good? Easy, right? Okay, so now I'm allowed to do a lot of things now. So keep in mind that these are the sperm, these are the eggs, and what we made here, think about it. These are the new babies. These are zygotes in here. Zygotes that are going to develop, right? 
and become organisms. Now, what this means is this this fertilization box doesn't mean that if you have it doesn't mean that if you have that you're going to have only four kids, okay? I mean, you can have as many as you want. All this does is gives us a probability. In other words, the chances of you getting certain genotypes or phenotypes. So, let's look in here now. We can do the genotypic ratio. The genotypic ratio is just telling us how many of each genotype we have in relationship to the others. Well, if I look across here, I have one, two, three, four genotypes of big T, little t. So how do I write the genotypic ratio? Just like that. I see four big T, little t's. Um, I don't see any other form, so I just leave it like that. And it's 100% tall, right? Why? Four out of four tall. Then phenotypic ratio. Now I'm talking about the physical um, appearance. So I'm not talking about big T, little t's anymore. I'm talking about is it tall or short? What is it? And I have four tall or 100% tall. Now we're going to move to some other practice problems, but not here. I'm going to do them on a piece of paper now. So follow me, all right? Okay, students. So we're going to look at this problem here. A hybrid tall male is crossed with a heterozygous tall female. What are the possible offspring genotypes and phenotypes? Now, one thing I like to do with these problems is I like to write out what the alleles mean. Uh, the height gene, that's the gene we're talking about. And tall, uh, little t is short. So put a star by this because this is something we want to do every time you have a word problem. Um, one of the things to, it, to add to our rules. Remember the first rule is what are the parents? We know we're going to be crossing someone, so you can automatically do that. That's a good start. And that's the first thing we want to do. And then we're going to get the sex cells or a gametes, right? And then we're going to fertilize in our Punnett squares. So these are our general rules. Now, let's first find the parents in there. We know two people are crossed. A hybrid tall male. Okay, that's one parent. That's the male. And then we're going to have a female over here. It's crossed with the heterozygous tall female. Now, vocabulary is important. And let's circle what this word is right here, hybrid. Now, does that sound like it's going to be big T, big T, big T, little T, little T, or little T, little T? So when you think of hybrid, it's like a, like a hybrid car, right? You know, it's half something, half another thing. Um, it's like half electric, half gas, like a hybrid car. So hybrid really mean, means a mix. In other words, heterozygous. So it's the same thing. So hybrid tall. So how am I going to show that? Well, I'm going to show big T, little t. I know it's tall, so capital win, so it's tall. All right, cool. And then the female uh, says heterozygous. So they're tricking us in this question. It's the same thing. Heterozygous tall. That's how you say heterozygous tall right there. Big T, little t. All right, so now we got to get the sex cells. So we take them through meiosis. And we know these problems are easy, right? Because all you do is segregate. And we're going to get some sperm. Here are the sperm combinations of uh, big T, little t. Remember, it's four cells, but these are the real two combinations we get. Over here, the eggs, big T, little t. All right, cool. Now we got the sex cells, gametes. All right, cool. So now let's draw a little um, Punnett square. Now here's the thing. We're talking about one gene. So whenever we do problems where we're talking about one gene, we know that this is a mono-hybrid cross. Mono meaning one. And we're going to mix things up. So we're going to be mixing and mating things. So mono-hybrid cross. So let's see how this plays out. So I'm going to draw a box with four squares in it. And I'm going to put, remember we put the sperm out here? There goes the sperm. We put the eggs over here. And inside are going to go the zygotes. So I'm going to go ahead and draw the zygotes with the, little, with the little halos and all that. Okay. Just so you can get an idea of what's happening. We're fertilizing things in here. So let's go ahead and fertilize them. So um, I'm going to put the sperm there. So I'm just going to bring the sperm right there. Big T, little T. Eggs over here. Big T, little T. All right, cool. So remember, down and across, big T, big T, uh, down and across. But instead of little t, big T, out of respect, we put big T, little t. You got to put the capital one in front. Same thing, uh, down and across, 
uh, big T goes in front. And then down across, little t, little t. All right, cool. So now we're going to do something, get the genotypic ratios. Genotypic ratios. Okay, so what do I do first? Here's a good method of doing this. Now I like to take some, uh, have some colors around here. So now what I like to do is first look at the first combination here. It's big T, big T, all right? One, big T, big T. How many times do I see that? I only see it once, right there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take my marker, cross it out because I saw it already. I want to just write that I, I did that one already. Dot, dot. We're doing a ratio, a comparison between different types. The second combination I see is big T, little t. How many times do I see that? Well, right here. Once, twice. So what do I put in front of big T, little t? I put two because I saw it twice. Dot, dot. And then I see little t, little t. And how many times do I see that? Well, look around. Uh, yeah, once. Easy, right? So I just, what do I put? Well, I saw it once, so one little t, little t. All right, cool. Now, phenotypic ratio. Now we're looking at the ratios of the appearances. So what are the appearances we have? Well, tall and short. All right, so how many tall? Well, let's look at the first one. Big T, big T. That's what it means, right? Tall. Okay, cool. Big T, little t. You're probably wondering, wait, what is it, short or tall? Well, dominant wins, so it's still tall. And this is also tall, so guess what? These three are tall. Dot, dot, and then this one is short. Now, I, you should do something that I didn't do here. I'm sorry about that. But when I see those big T, big T, big T, little t's and all that, these were tall, I cross them out. Just so you can keep order. And then the last one's one small t, small t, which is one short. All right, cool. So these are the ratios. Now I can get percentages just to get some more information. Now, let's see. Um, the information would be how many tall. Well, there's three out of four that are tall. And I could even change that to a percent or 75%. Okay? Same thing. Um, and then one out of four is short. Well, what is that? 25%. Okay, so there you go. This is basic uh, Punnett squares.